So I was telling Patrick last night I did not need anywhere near the time I was allotted because the differential diagnosis from a cutaneous perspective for Dagos is actually quite brief. It's one thing. It's Dagos. I'll talk about and show some pictures of lupus also um, because there's so much emphasis in it, on it in the literature about similarities to lupus. But Dagos is so characteristic in its cutaneous appearance. The, there are a few other things that look like it. And these are the pictures. Here's a picture of the classic appearance of Dagos. Several years ago, when Patrick was telling me about a patient on the floor that he was following and neurology was following, and he said, they are the most peculiar lesions. They are white, white in the center, and there's a red rim. And I said, well, you know, it's funny. When you describe it like that, the only thing I can think of is what, when we're always studying for our boards in dermatology, people talk about what Dago's disease looks like. It turned out that this child did have Dago's. When Dago's is diagnosed, it's usually diagnosed by skin biopsy. That's usually how the definitive diagnosis is made. So everyone should really know what Dago's looks like. You see here the atrophic center. The rim telangiectasias are uh, very classically described. Papules appear, often they appear in crops. There is a central depression or umbilication to the lesions. The center of it is usually a different color, often yellow initially, and then it goes on and becomes white and shiny or atrophic. And the border tends to remain erythematous. It may actually have telangiectasias. And that is the classic look of Dagos. When the lesions are early on, they may be yellowish or gray. They vary in diameter but um, in presentation, but often the presentation is of monomorphic looking lesions. They may develop central necrosis, and Noah had mentioned sometimes you can see this crusting. That may be necrosis that we're seeing. But eventually the centers end up being white, and a porcelain white, and the edges end up being erythematous, with or without telangiectasias. This is an early lesion where you can see the yellowish discoloration in the center. And you already see the annular border beginning. You can see how the lesion is depressed. These are more advanced lesions taking on that whitish color. And you can see in this patient how monomorphic the lesions appear in the erythematous intelligence. retina, optic nerves, and you can also have telangiectasias with microaneurysms in the eyes. In the literature, these are the things that you'll see most frequently cited in the differential diagnosis. And Noah showed some pictures of atrophy blanche. Um, in atrophy blanche, though, you won't see, and as Noah po pointed out, you won't see the oval or round lesions that are so characteristic of Dagos. Also in atrophy blanche, when you see it, the lesions, you know, tend to be stellate. They tend to be much, they don't have to be larger, but um, they're fewer in number. I'll show you lesions of lupus where individual features of cutaneous lupus are similar to Dago's, but you'll never see a patient with lupus that has all of the cutaneous features that you see in a cutaneous lesion of Dago's. An allergic necrotizing vasculitis, although you see that in the differential diagnosis in the literature, I don't think it looks anything like those lesions. So this, you know, if you're going to say something comes close, even though it remains very distant from what cutaneous lesions of Dagos look like, this is subacute cutaneous lupus. You have an annular shape, but it's usually very scaly. You may have atrophy, but often also what you're seeing underneath that atrophy is hyperemia. You're seeing redness. And when you see even an annular scaly lesion, the subacute cutaneous lupus, rarely are they going to be monomorphic. In fact, they're so varied in their shape that it more often looks like psoriasis and plaques of psoriasis. You can have large plaques that look just like large plaque psoriasis and subacute cutaneous lupus. It really is not a close second to Dagos. Now, it may be under the microscope, and um, Bernie Ackerman is a very skilled um, and unique uh, dermatopathologist, but from a cutaneous perspective, Dagos is very different. These are discoid lesions of cutaneous lupus. 
and you see a sheen on the slide, that's because the lesions are shining. The epidermis is thinned, you're seeing down to the epidermis. So even with that atrophy, you're still seeing pink. You're not seeing porcelain white. So there's atrophy here, but in discoid lupus, you can see those punctate scales, you see little rough scaly areas on his cheek. And even the atrophy is still a pink color. And you won't see those monomorphic round lesions that you see in Dacos. This is discoid lupus. This is another form of cutaneous lupus. This woman had systemic lupus, and she had lesions that had been actually misdiagnosed as acne. But dermal papules are very characteristic. And maybe Dacos will even start as lesions that look like dermal papules but it will advance. That center will take on a different appearance. It'll become yellowish or gray, eventually become white, and the border will remain distinct. Then, moreover, if you're going to argue that uh, lupus and dagos have some similarities, the presentation of lupus, and as a dermatologist, when you're starting to have the suspicion for lupus, all of these questions that you'll ask, you won't see in a patient with dagos. As Noah said, you won't see a photosensitivity. There will not be a photo distribution in Dagos. There is often in lupus or a history of photosensitivity. In fact, that's even one of the criteria for systemic lupus. Patients may have aphthous ulcers in lupus, and they may have urticaria or a photo-induced urticaria. So this is subacute cutaneous lupus, and the only thing that comes a distant close to Dagos is the fact that it's annular and slightly atrophic. It does not have that porcelain white center. Those hyperemic, very prominent borders, often telangiectatic, that you see in Dagos. Again, Dagos, the multiple lesions that you often see, and they often will come up in crops. Close up photos of the lesions of Dagos. Again, that hyperemic border. And this is how lesions frequently start. But very quickly, the center of the lesion will look different than the surrounding area. And it'll begin to have that annular look and that very characteristic white, porcelain white center. So it's interesting in the literature that there are some similarities as you think about lupus and you think about dagos. But the diagnosis tends to be made by the skin, and the skin definitely, the lesions of Dagos have a very unique appearance that can help us diagnostically. From a dermatologic perspective, when I see patients with lupus, there seems to be some forgiveness in the process. There seems to be some irreversibility that happens in that someone may have a reaction, say, to the sun or lack of sleep or a medication or an illness, and their cutaneous lupus flares they have a chance of becoming clear again. In Dagos, it seems to be a much more irreversible process, a much more um, serious process that when each step is taken, it seems like there's no way going back. I also just would like to say that um, I appreciate having come here. I appreciate the fact that both Sandy Clancy and Dr. Patrick Whalen got together the way they did to take um, a very sad opportunity of the boy with Dagos and bring us all together in a way that we can brainstorm, we can think about it, and uh, develop the kind of relationships that may help us advance in thinking about this disease. Thank you.